episode 3 of Photography Exposed. I'm teaching digital imaging at Washington College this semester, and in class today, as part of a demonstration for something that the students are doing in an assignment, I was showing uh, the process of taking images, creating panoramics from them, and basically building these little mini planets from them. And I kind of did a couple quick examples in class today. And I thought this might be a neat uh, topic to bring up and uh, make a podcast uh, for uh, for Photography Exposed. So, um, so I've got an example that I'm going to do today. Here's actually a, a, a mini planet that I made from a 360 degree panoramic shot from uh, the uh, Washington, Martha Washington Square on campus, which has a few of the buildings surrounding it here. And uh, so I want to make a variation of this where I've taken uh, these photos and then I've taken the raw images and, and I've actually processed them as uh, HDR images in, in Photomatics. So I'm going to create a new version based on that and see how that turns out. But before I get into that, I just want to quickly show what exactly is happening and why these uh, these images turn out the way they do. So to demonstrate that, I just created this really quick rough grid here. And I, and I did it with a gradient where it's black up at the top and red at the bottom just to kind of show uh, what's going to be happening with the images when we go ahead and process them. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this into Photoshop and just really quickly show what happens when you basically go to uh, distort and polar coordinates and then use the rectangular to polar coordinate conversion. And as you can see, uh, we've got this radial pattern here. And in the center, it's black. And all around the edges, edges it's uh, red. And so what's happening, if I just hit undo, you can see that the top of the image, uh, this whole top uh, line, is this whole edge is now uh, condensed into this one point, basically. And this whole bottom edge, which you can see is the red here, is now the entire outside of the image. So it's converting it from one set of uh, coordinates to the other. And so if you think about the mini planets, they're basically little spheres that are living in the center of the image. And so if we wanted to make the spheres based around this black area in the photo, that black area would have to be the top of the image. So, uh, and then again, the opposite, um, you know, the outside sky around this little mini globe that we're making, that would need to be the bottom of the image. So, uh, what I did to start was I just, again, I took 17 photos and a 360 degree, uh, you know, just kind of handheld these shots, brought them into um, Photomatics, processed them, and then, you know, saved them all as individual JPEGs. I've also reduced the size of them so that way it'll be a little bit quicker to do the demonstration with. And so I'm just going to go ahead and go to Automate and use Photo Merge. And uh, so in here I'm just going to go ahead and hit Auto for the layout. It's going to go ahead and try to automatically warp them, align them, you know, resize them as needed to make them fit. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and take the vignetting removal uh, setting here. And, and then I'm just going to go ahead and browse for the folder where they're at. And it's going to be actually a different folder. I'm going to go ahead and use the one where I've got, gone and reduced the size of the file so that way it does go quicker for the demo here. Uh, 17 21 megapixel images just for uh, a reference with this MacBook Pro with 8 gigs of RAM took about uh, 15 minutes to create the panoramic so you know for sake of uh, doing this video I figured uh, it would probably do exactly what I needed to do as far as demonstration purposes and make things a whole lot quicker so um, it's uh, already going quite a bit faster and uh, as you can see it's 12.15 now. I'll go ahead and speed the section up and cut to the chase and I'll show you what's what's being formed here. Okay now that the panorama has finished building you can see what it did is it created a bunch of layers each one has a layer mask and you can see where it's just kind of warping and blending the images together to make this rough panoramic and you can see that I actually did slightly more than 360 degrees I've got this building repeating here and so uh, this is good because this will let me uh, have a nice clear breaking point to where I you know divide uh, on the sides and hopefully get a nice continuous uh, 360 degree panoramic which will translate well into this little mini planet so first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and um, I'm just going to go ahead and merge these layers and now I need to basically uh, crop this down into a rectangular selection but to do that I'm going to want to be able to uh, again choose a point where I'm going to divide on some some place to make a nice clean break so I need to look for some a uh, nice hard edge to, to work with. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and maybe grab this uh, this corner of the building over here. So let me just kind of go in a little closer and you can get a better look at what, what we've got here. And maybe like this uh, this corner of the building will be a good edge to, to work off of. So what I'll do is um, go ahead and grab our crop tool 
and I'm just going to kind of roughly just quickly throw this out here and again so the idea is I want to have it line up on this edge of the building and the same place over here the other thing I want to do is I'm going to uh, try to make sure that I don't include an area any areas where I get that uh, you know the background uh, not being in the shot I want to make sure it's all all the pieces are there that I need to build this so uh, this is not an exact science to get this out I've uh, this to work right I, I've kind of found that about a one-third on the bottom two-thirds on the top seems to work pretty well but it depends on what you're doing and, and how it all looks uh, so before I go in and do and adjust the sides one thing I do want to check is that I've got uh, a nice horizontal uh, uh, horizon here it, it could be slightly askew and I want to make sure that that's not going to be the case so what I'm going to do is go ahead and zoom in I just move my crop uh, you know the bottom of my crop line up to uh, just barely down from the top of this step on this side and if I'm straight it looks like I'm just barely down from the top of the step on this side so if that wasn't straight I would grab on these uh, corner uh, co corners here and just go ahead and, and just pull that crop to be you know something that's kind of askew like this but in this case I'll just go ahead and put it back to where it was so I don't want to leave it there I want to actually include the brick but I'm just using that as uh, some point that's easy to see uh, to make sure my horizon is nice and level so I'll go ahead and pull this down and I don't want to include any of the the bottom area here where there is no detail same thing if I go ahead and include more of this top area I don't want to get into where there's no detail up in the top here now I need to basically align the right and the left side so I'm again I'm using the side of this uh, this building it's the actually the performing arts building uh, on campus here and I'm just gonna keep zooming in a little bit more we're actually at hundred percent now I'm just gonna go in a little bit closer and again I'm gonna go in now and I'll be able to align this so what I'm gonna do is just bring it in to that line is just touching the edge of that metal frame and then I'll go into the other side of the image and the same thing I'm gonna pull it out of the way just so that way it's nice and nice and clear and then I'm gonna pull this line till it's just touching the edge of that metal frame and now that should do the trick so if I zoom out here that's what it's gonna be uh, once I hit the return key here you can see there I've got my my panoramic here so if you're starting with just a panoramic image that you shot of some area um, that is not a 360 degree panoramic uh, this is where you're gonna be basically picking up this is where you're gonna be starting with your image it doesn't have to be a continuous uh, 360 degree panoramic it just makes it easier because you have less work to do later in cleaning up where the seam is where these uh, two images are gonna meet uh, but we will have to do a little bit of cleaning probably on this anyway but in any case so now that we've got this the next step is we need to make this into a square image so I'll go up to image and image size and so we can see that right now the width and the height are shown here um, typically you'll have the constraint proportions box checked as well make sure you uncheck that and in this case I'm just gonna uh, extrapolate this up to 4400 and now uh, it's gonna basically make this a tall square image uh, we'll take, take this and if you recall when we were doing the uh, the demonstration with that grid the top of the image is what was the center of the little planet the little center of the sphere and the bottom is what was becoming the perimeter so we actually need to flip this upside down so that way the sky is the perimeter and the brick is the center so if we go into image rotate 180 degrees and then we can go ahead and go into filter and again go to distort polar coordinates make sure you choose the first one rectangular to polar and there's our planet and you can see again it's taking those edges and just kind of blowing them out a little bit here in it so this uh, the, the, the corners of this image that's creating are not really uh, something you're going to want to keep. You might want to get rid of those, but it kind of gives it a kind of like an atmospheric look around it. And in this case, if you zoom in, you can see that there's actually a pretty interesting detail in the bricks uh, where this pattern all comes together. But uh, you get the idea for how this ends up looking kind of like a planet type look. So there's a seam that goes right up across the from the dead center straight up. And in fact, if you zoom in, you can see it's not perfect. And if I just kind of slide up here on the steps, you can see it doesn't line up perfectly here. It doesn't line up perfectly on the building. And as we go up, you can see the seam is not perfect. So uh, it actually would make more sense to line up the seam in something that is not going to show imperfection. Maybe if I had done it over here in this tree, for example, that might be a better place to do it because uh, the tree does not need to show uniformity. Um, it can be retouched easily and it's not like this grid of glass where if it's going to easily show where we don't have it matching up correctly. Uh, but you can see how that would work and again if I undo here you can see that the uh, 
the center of the image is now the bottom. And uh, what is at the edges here is what ends up being basically the very top. So I can go ahead and show you how to clean this up, but this is actually pretty close and it, I'm not sure if it's going to really convey very well in this uh, quick you know, webcast uh, of the importance of cleaning up this edge here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring another photo really quickly to show the importance of uh, cleaning up that edge. So for example, in this image, uh, we've got, this is a, again a, a photo from campus here. I'm just going to take this image and show you how you would quickly do this with just that single image. So I'll bring, go ahead and bring this into Photoshop. And again, the first step is to kind of create your, uh, your panoramic image. So now you can see if I drag out the crop tool, you can see that my horizon is not perfectly straight. I'm looking at the street line here and then kind of where the trees are meeting the ground. So I'm just going to go ahead and tilt this a little bit and slide this up and kind of put those corners on that horizon. And again, I'm just kind of quickly estimating here for the video, but you can go ahead and zoom in and get this as close as possible. The more time you spend making this clean here, the better it's going to be and the easier it's going to be to clean it up later. Uh, but you need to basically then pick a point where you're going to be joining your edges. So uh, luckily these trees are nice and you know generic enough that I can uh, retouch in the trees and it won't be too obvious. Um, it would probably make uh, more sense from a joining standpoint to join this tree with maybe this tree over here because of the way they, they're, they're shaped and everything, but I don't want to cut the flagpole out. So I'm just going to go ahead and include this other tree a little bit and uh, include out to about here. And so again, now we've got uh, this nice, uh, what will be a horizontal line here. Um, it's slightly askew now, but I'll just go ahead and pull this down. And again, my rule of thumb is about one third to about two thirds ground to sky. So again, I'll just crop that image size, making sure my constraint proportions is not checked. And I'm just going to match my height to my width. So it's 39, 68 image rotate 180 degrees filter and my last is uh, polar coordinates but you know otherwise it's under distort polar coordinates and so now you can see where the seam is a lot more obvious uh, because it wasn't a 360 degree image and as we have variations in lighting in the sky it becomes a lot more obvious that this is not you know created from a, uh, a 360 degree image so if I undo here's a quick trick that you can do to fix this so I'm going to zoom out a little bit here if you go under filter and uh, Sometimes some of these filters are hidden, so if you just go down to Show All Menu Items, and then go to Other, and Offset. And what this is going to do is it's going to, if this is set at zero, you're going to see that it's going to look just like the image as it is. But otherwise, with wrap around uh, checked off here, you can shift the image by a certain amount. So let's say uh, this image is about 4,000 pixels wide. So if we shifted it by about 2,000 pixels, you'll see that this seam is now just about in the middle. And now the edges are actually split from a, a part of the sky that's continuous. So we don't need to worry about this matching up because it should match up perfectly. But because this is now in the middle of the image, it's a lot easier to have it in a, in a place that's gonna be you know, uh, easy to work on to, to make it um, blend together. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose my clone stamp tool. And again, just really quickly for this demonstration here, I'm just gonna go in and quickly just kind of cover over some of these areas with the grass, try to take these shadows and make it look like it's not so uh, disjointed here. Grab some of this background here. Throw it over these trees. So we have to do something with this part of the tree here to make it look a little bit less fake. Uh, let me fix this a little better. That was kind of rough. I'll grab from this tree maybe and just kind of fill in here a little bit. And then I'll just grab like that. So in any case, that's pretty good for now. Uh, this tree does not look good, but I'll just grab from another tree. Maybe I'll just grab from uh, this tree just to grab the top here. And I'll just bring this in and just kind of try to paint in something so that way it gives us something to work with. Again, I'm just trying to do this quickly for the demonstration. Uh, but again, so now the big challenge is the, the sky here. So if I zoom out a little bit, you can see that this is where there's cloud cover and not, and it's a very obvious line. So again, I'll just kind of quickly grab a large brush and using the clone stamp tool I'm just going to kind of blend in some of the sky from either side so that way it's not real obvious where that seam is. Try not to mess up that flagpole while I'm doing it uh, because I don't want to lose that that detail in there. 
and I'm trying to avoid repeating areas like that big streak in the sky. So this isn't really turning out great <laughs> because of that line there, but for sake of time, I'm just going to do it kind of quick and dirty here so that way this video is not too long. I think it's probably good enough for the video. So in any case, um, we've got this uh, cleaned up kind of quickly here. And now if we go back up into filter, distort, polar coordinates, and again use the rectangular polar. Now that seam is uh, it's a little bit cleaner. You can't really see it obviously where it was. Um, the seam actually at the top is what's at the as it is at the edges here. That's the one that's um, was you know previously uh, divided and uh, or it was previously in the center and we've divided it here. The center area is what is now showing up at the bottom. So um, it's uh, it's looks pretty decent. Again, you could do a better job. If you zoom in, you can see that the very center area looks a little funny too. So, you know, this is a little bit difficult to retouch this grass and make it look absolutely convincing uh, because of the angle you'd be looking at it. It wouldn't be from one of the sides; it would be top down. But you get the idea of how you can create these little mini planets from a panoramic. And so, if anybody has any questions about this, feel free to email photographyexposed at gmail.com. And, and if you've also got ideas for an upcoming episode, something you'd like to see us try to do, feel free to send your comments and your questions there as well. And thanks for watching, and we'll hopefully see you back here soon for another episode.